Hi guys and welcome back. You join me in the workshop today and I know we ain't been here in a little while. We've been out on the road focusing on little small jobs and bits of boxing in and building stud walls and bits and pieces. But what some of you might not know is I'm actually a uh, qualified bench joiner. I started off as a bench joiner slash cabinet maker and then went on to carpentry. So we're back in the workshop and we're going to be doing a joinery project today. We're going to be building an oak barn sliding door for, for my living room. Um, really looking forward to doing it. I got all my timber out yesterday and I got it sort of oversized, ripped down. Uh, this timber come rough planed, I'd say, from the guy that I got it for. I'll put a link in the description to where I got this timber for. Fully paid for and all that. It's not sponsored or anything, but it's just the guy that I like getting my timber from. So I'll put him down there. If you're in the Essex area, he's a really good guy called Josh. Um, so yeah, he sort of like skip planed all of this yesterday just to have a little look at it basically. It's not the cleanest oak in the world, but I didn't want the cleanest oak in the world. Like you can see there are some inclusions in this, some, some knots and that, but I don't mind that for the sort of style of door we're building. It's going to look quite nice to have some in there. Maybe there's a little bit too much, but it's going to be nice. But anyway, so I'm going to stop waffling. What we're going to do is we're going to jump on the planer and we're going to plane some of this timber up and then... Look uh, look at setting all of this out for our mortises, tenons and bits and pieces. I'll put a picture up, if I haven't already, I can't remember if I said that. I'll put a picture up of the door we're building. I just sort of did a rough 3D model. It's not to scale, not to size or anything, but I just wanted to visualise what it was going to look like and so I could show you guys. Um, the bracing in it, now typically on a ledger and brace door, you'd, you'd have the braces going like that back away from the hinge side but because this is going to be hanging from the top we're going to do our braces as in like cross bracing uh, it'll all make sense when I do it to you so yeah just in case anyone says that I'm doing the bracing wrong or anything the bracing's not actually going to be doing a hell of a lot for bracing on the pivot so it doesn't matter what way we do it and I like the look of having them sort of crossed crossed over like that I think it'll look nicer for this door so that's why we're doing that before I get a load of questions about that but anyway I'm going to stop waffling let's jump on the planer and let's get some of this planed up and then uh yeah we can start looking at setting some of this out <laughs> Okay guys, so we've just been through the overhand and uh, or the plane or whatever you want to call it. And we've just gone through and got one flat face and one square edge on there. Now it's important to make sure that these are, I can show you guys, like bang on square because what we don't want to do, on the rails it, it's not quite as important. Obviously we need it to be square, but it's not quite as important, but on the styles, which a bit of terminology here, the styles are the two long bits that run up the side of the door. On the styles, it's really important that these are square edge, so flat face and square edge, because if they're slightly out, what you're gonna do is create a twist in your door, so it's really important that we go through and we make sure that we've got one flat face, one flat edge, and a square edge. So we're gonna reference that by putting a face mark on there. Now your face mark can be anything you want it to be. Mine's like a little squiggle that goes to the line and then a V, which is quite traditional. Um, so yeah, so we're, we've established our square edge and our face. Now what we're gonna do is, these are still quite thick over, so I'm gonna put these through the saw and I'm gonna plane up the other two faces. Okay guys, so that's not everything planed up because we haven't done our TNG panels yet but that's the main door frame all planed up. So what I wanna do quickly is just run through how this is all gonna work for you guys. So if you look here, we've got our styles. Let me get this one out of the way. So yeah, we've got our style here, which is the two upright bits of the door that go up. And this is our top rail, which is the same thickness as that. So that's absolutely fine. That's just gonna have a mortise in the middle uh, a tenon in the middle and a mortise in the middle of the rail. So that's just standard. But then when we look at these, these are what's going to be called a bare-faced rail going into these. So you can see they're only half the thickness of the door. So what's going to happen is it's only going to have a shoulder on one side of these tenons 
and nothing on the other side. And that's just so when our T and G panel runs through, it can sit flush up against here. So I hope that makes sense. It should do as we move forward in the video, you should get an idea of what we're doing here. But what we're gonna do now is actually turn our attention to marking all of these components up. This one here is my middle rail. So that's fine, that's at thickness. So that can go straight in. But I didn't have a bit of timber big enough to make my bottom rail. So I've got those two bits here. They don't match in color, but like, like I said, I'm fine with that because I don't mind this door looking a little bit, you know, uh, rustic as it were. So we need to join these two together, get these two um, glued up. So that's gonna be our bottom rail. Mid rail, top rail. So we'll get all of these marks up and then we can get on with actually doing the fun bit of actually uh, joining all of these together. Now we've got the boring planing bit out of the way. So let's get some PVA on here. I'm not going with uh, anything fancy because this is an internal door. I mean, it's still water-based glue, but we're not gonna use PU or anything like that because we don't need to. So we want enough glue, but not too much glue spread on that. This glue's a bit cold, it's a bit, it's a bit chilly in here. Okay, so now we've got our glue on there. I was debating to put some dominoes in there just for our positioning, but to be honest, it's planed up lovely, this timber, so I don't think I need to. It's actually sitting really lovely and tidy and flat, so we're gonna stick with that and just start getting these clamped up, making sure that where we clamp, it sits nice and flush. there. Okay, perfect, that's much better. Right, so we're at the top of the door here, at the head. It's really hard for me to mark this out because obviously it's nearly two meters long. So I'm gonna show you guys step by step as we go down. We've got a little bit of snipe on the end here, which you always get. So what I wanna do is I wanna start my door 50 mil down is where we're gonna start. And that way it's gonna give us a little bit of extra timber on the top that we can cut off afterwards and it's gonna eliminate that bit of snipe. So we will square that line across. So that's my overall height of my door, my top rail, if you like. We've then got our mid rail, which we could measure, but what I'm gonna do is just lay this on and I'm going to take the height of our top rail there. Sorry, I said mid rail a minute ago. I meant top rail. So that's our top rail height. What we want to do now is establish our tenon and our haunch. Now, I like, I know some people like to do 50-50. I don't like to do that. I like more tenon than haunch. It's just personal preference, really. Some people argue it's stronger. But I'm going to go thirds on this. So we've got a 90 mil rail, so it's a 60 mil mortise. And when I look at that, that might be a bit much. So I'm actually gonna go 55 mil for the mortise and then 35 mil for the haunch. I think that's gonna be quite a nice ratio across there. So that's a through mortise, that's a haunch. Yeah, again, when I come to do this on the mortise, I will explain all of this. So we can now move ourselves down to the other side of the door. So if I take you guys over. Right, so now we wanna mark out the bottom. And because we hooked that on the end, it means that we can just do do that to get our measurements now. So the, so the overall height of my door is going to be 1980 plus the 50 mil because we've got 50 mil waist up the top there. So that gives us two meter 30. So if we mark that out, two meter 30, that's the overall height of our door established there. Then what we can do is we can measure back 200 mil because I'm doing a 200 mil bottom rail on this making sure that we know we're measuring from the 100 mil. If I measure, move you guys around, you'll be able to see what I'm doing better. Okay, you should be able to see what I'm doing better now. So yeah, we measured from our 100 mil, so it's actually 300 mil we want here. So we'll mark that out and we can square that line across there. 
And because we're 200 mil, we can do 50, 50, 50, because I think that'll be a nice ratio for doing that. So we'll do 50 mil, 50 mil, 50 mil. That's it. So we've got through mortise, through mortise, and haunch, and haunch. And there'll be a nice ratio for them. Yeah, again, I know some people do it differently, but that's how I like to do mine. That's how I was taught. So that's what we're going to do with that. Now we need to do our mid rail. So we need to find our center point between this, this uh, shoulder line here and the same on the top rail. And then that'll give us our midpoint. So I'll do that. Okay, so between them two shoulder lines, we've got 16.88 divided by two gives us 8.44, but then we need to minus 165 mil for that as well. So let's do that. So we've got 16.88 minus, double check we are 165 mil actually. No, we're not, we're 164 minus 164. That gives us 15.22 divided by 2. That gives us 762 millimetres. So we can mark that out. Going from our 100 again, so we've got to make sure we add that on. So we've got 862 millimetres. And then what we can do is do the same from the other side. 862. And then measure the distance between them, which should give us... Yeah, 164 mil. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna start marking out for our rails now. Now these are nice and easy because they're all the same size and they're all square shouldered. We've got no rebates to worry about. So we've got no offset shoulders or anything like that. So it's nice and easy. So we're gonna start on our widest board down here and get this marked out. Now I know that the overall of our door is 900, so we'll get that marked out on there. That's the easy measurement to get to get done. Yeah, again, what we'll do is we'll mark it all out on one route and then transfer over to the other. We don't want to mark these out individually across them because then we can get errors in there. So all off the same one. So what we need is our overall thickness of our styles which is 88 millimeters shouldn't have been it should have been 90 but that's all we could get out of it so we've got 88 millimeters there i mean the beauty of a sliding door like this is if it ends up slightly narrower it don't matter because it ain't going in a frame but if we was building this to go in a frame we'd want it we'd actually make it tight and then shoot it down to suit but because it's overlaying and it's going to be free like basically free it doesn't matter what size we make it so we need 88 millimeters from this side as well and then that gives us our shoulder lines. So yet again, like I said, nice and easy to mark this one out. Double check that, we've got 88 millimeters there and 88 millimeters there and they're nice and square. So that's gonna give us a nice clear rail for that. So we'll square them lines down and then we'll do the same on the other. we'll do now is we'll transfer these marks across because we know that this rail can't slide off of this rail so it's going to be the same size so we'll just transfer them lines across and then we know our shoulder sizes are the same size in an ideal world if i had a bigger workshop and i had a tenner we wouldn't need to go through all this stage we could just set up on the tenner but i haven't got that i haven't got that luxury so this is how we're going to do it and Let's be honest, if you guys are making a door at home as well, you're not gonna have a 10 in her either. So this is the way to do it. There we go, guys. I've had to move the mortiser over. Don't ask me how I got this over here, because, uh, yeah, one of them. But I've had to move the mortiser over because where it lives, it's not big enough to get a door style in there. So I've moved it over. So yeah, we're gonna start mortising out. We're going to leave our haunches in the middle. We're going to do all of our through mortises first and then we'll reset the mortiser to do the haunches in the middle so they're all the same height. So yeah, I'm going to get on with that. Um, I might be here a little while, so I won't show you it all. 
but uh, I'll show you a little bit of it and then, uh, then we can jump over onto the table saw and actually start doing some tenon in. But yeah, Mortis in first, so let's do that. Okay guys, I've had to stop there for a second and bring you back on because uh, it's hold your hands up confession time. When I set out for these mortises, dead centre, and thickness these rails, I was going to do a 10mm mortise in there. And then at the last minute I've, I changed my mind and put a 12mm mortise in there. So as it stands at the minute, if I line that up, you can see we've got this little shoulder here which I don't want. I want this flush like that. Luckily, I've only done this on one side, on the inside, so I can just reset this mortise. So and when I cut from the outside of the door, it'll be offset. It'll mean that half of this shoulder won't be touching, which will weaken the joint slightly. But I think we will still have enough glue area in there. So, yeah, hold your hands up time. I uh, made a mistake, but there you go. We're all human, aren't we? And uh, they wouldn't put pencils on rubbers if we didn't make mistakes. So I'm gonna rectify it. Luckily, it's only on this one style. The other style I haven't done yet. The other one's over there, you can see. So we can we can get around it, but yeah. Silly boy. Okay, guys, so I got over our little issue. I'm calling it ours, because you're part of this as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got over our little issue just by simply putting the 10 mil mortise chisel back in. So that fixed that problem. Like I said, on the other style, I am gonna have a slightly bigger mortise in here but it's not the end of the world. It doesn't go right away through, so I'm not gonna see it from the outside of the door, so that's not a problem. Right, so now we need to do our haunches, and what I'm gonna do is set our haunch depth down to about there somewhere, only roughly give or take. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. And then we'll get that set, and then we can punch out all these haunches. I've already done the top rail, because the top rail's still got the half inch chisel in it. I left the top rail as it is, um, just purely because it'll be, it's a thicker rail, so it'll look proportionately right. Um, yeah, like I said, holding my hands up to some, uh, some faults. Luckily this is my door and not a customer's, otherwise uh, we might have to remake. But there you go. So I'm gonna get these all haunched out and then uh, we're on to rails. Okay guys, so now all that mortising is done, we're gonna turn our attention to the rails. So you can see I've got my middle rail here and my top rail here, because I wanna show you the differences in what we're doing. So this is the bare-faced rail that I was talking about. So this part here is the tenon, and then this is gonna be the shoulder of the tenon on here. So you can see on this side, it's got nothing on it, and that's why it's a bare-faced tenon, because this, this is bare-faced. So that's gonna be our mid rail that goes in there and then this is our top rail that's gonna go in so you can see that's our tenon down the middle and then we've got two shoulders on this one. So these are different sizes because obviously I had to change that chisel over to uh, accommodate for my mistake. But you know, we won't keep on going on about that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna set the saw up now and we're gonna start with the top rail, get that done and then we're gonna move our way over to the bottom rail. Like I said, ideal world, I'd have a tenon to do this but I haven't got that luxury so table saw it is. Okay guys, so it's time to see if our tenons actually fit. And yeah, that's nice. Nice tight fit there. Not too tight that you have to hammer them in, but tight enough. So we just need to mark out for where our tenons and our haunches are. So we do that with a little mark on there. And then we're gonna mark H and H so we know that this is a through tenon <coughs> and then this is a haunch. Now we need to establish the depth of our haunch. And the way I do that is I get my combination square and I push it down into the hole, make sure it's pushed down nice and tight. And then check that right the way across. And then we can get that mark, if I can get you guys to see that. And that's how we establish that mark. Make sure your, your uh, combination square is not sitting twisted. Make sure it's sitting nice and flat and mark that. 
and mark that. Square that line. And then we can use our combination square. To do that. Okay guys, so we've got all our components laid out here. Now I have just gone through and just tested all of these in the individual joints just to make sure they go in and they're going in fairly well. They're a little bit snug, but I don't mind that because we're gonna be using a PU glue to glue this up. It's gonna make it, it's gonna lubricate the joints as we put them in. So that's pretty good. So we're gonna actually put the dry assemble the door for the first time now and check our measurements, check for square and all that and uh, just make sure we're happy with everything before we move on to the next stage. So let's try getting everything in. Like I said, I have tested these joints, so they all go together quite nicely. But ultimately, I just wanna throw some clamps on it and just check it, make sure we're happy. Okay guys, and here's a little look at the door. You can see our joints have come up nice and tight. We have got some clamps on, just loosely on here at the minute, but I've just checked it. We're actually under by two mil in the width, so I've made a discrepancy there, but like I said, it doesn't matter too much because this is going on the face of the frame. Um, but yeah, pulled up all nicely. Oh, you're not in shot there. Pulled up all nicely come up really well. These two panel sizes have come up exactly the same size, so 763 millimetres, I think it was. Uh, and they're measuring a meter and 38 across the diagonals on both of these. So I'm happy that they're both the right size. So that's come out really well. So there you go, guys. Like I said, we're a little bit under on the width, but we're fine on the height. Two mil underneath ain't gonna hurt anything on this door. That's perfectly fine. I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with how well these joints have come up on here. But I'm gonna leave it there on this one because I think this video is already getting quite long enough anyway. But um, what we're gonna be doing in the next video is we're gonna be looking at getting the diagonal braces in. I might domino them in, I'm not sure yet. You can just add them in afterwards because they are gonna screw down into the slats anyway, but I'm not sure. I might put some dominoes in there and just glue them up at the same time. I think that's probably what I'm gonna go with. But anyway, guys, like I said, I'm gonna leave it there. Next video is going to be the braces and we're going to get the slats in and we're going to get this glued up. And then the one after that, we'll probably look at getting it all installed and getting all the running gear and all that. I know it's going to be quite a few videos on this, but I think it justifies it. I think I want to do quite a lot of detail on this for you guys because you guys have been asking for more. So there you go. But um, I want to ask you guys to do me a favour here. We're working our way through the fruit bowl um, and I want you to put the words uh, uh, apricot in the uh, comments below. I don't think I've done that one yet. If I have, let me know in the comments. But yeah, if you put apricot in there, write the word apricot, just lets me know who's got this far in the video. It really helps me out as well. Helps me grow the channel. That'd be a massive help for me, guys. Thank you very much. If you've got any questions on anything that I've done here, or even if you would have done anything different to what I've done here, let me know below because, you know, everyone does stuff differently. So that'd be good to know how you guys would do stuff differently. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.